I'm gonna squat through this intro as much as I can until my legs got sore and then we're cutting this intro short and we're just getting into it. This will be my bookshelf tour. I am all of a sudden moving. I'm moving closer to the city. I'm moving in about three weeks. Therefore, I have to pack up this bookshelf today. It would make sense to do a bookshelf tour before I pack it up because I think when I reset it up at my next place, I might do another video reorganizing it because it is getting a little messy and it just it needs a revamp. And so let's get into it. Let's see how I organize my books and what books I have. Oh my God, okay. So here is like a overall shot of my bookshelf. So firstly on the bottom, this is really funny. Okay. <laughs> we have my good news Bible. I used to go to Catholic school for a couple of years when I was 13 years old, 14 years old. So I've got that from then. I have my Oxford Dictionary, which is also from schooling. Taking these books out is going to get annoying real quick. I have a lot of the books that I used to read as a kid. So I've got my Del Toro Quest books by Emily Rodder. They're an Australian series for kids. I've also got my Ronald Dow books. So I've got Danny, The Champion of the World, Matilda, The Witches, and Charlie the Chocolate Factory, plus two little ones here. I've got The Twits, and I've got George's Marvelous Medicine. I really liked this one, I remember. My favorites would be Matilda and the Witches. Witches was the best. That one blew my mind. Next, we have a bunch of Inner Blyden. He's mostly well known for The Fog of the Faraway Tree, if you've heard that book. But yeah, just more kid books here that I want to give to my kids when I'm older. Next, we have one of my favorite authors as a kid. It was Duncan Ball, Selby. The Selby series was based on this dog that could talk. It's sort of like Toy Story style. I remember specifically, I loved Selby the Wonder Dog. That was my favorite. That was sort of the one that I discovered Selby fruit and I also really like Selby's schmuzzle. I've also got Sold. This is a book that's actually probably more like middle grade to young adult. I remember I picked this up from the library as you can see here. I read this maybe around 11 I think. I think I picked it up from the library. Another kids series. This is a trilogy based on ancient China, I'm pretty sure, like an ancient Chinese dynasty. And it's about dragons. This is the first one, The Dragon Keeper by Carol Wilkinson. Carol Wilkinson, she got a lot of love in Australia here when I was a kid, when it comes to awards. And she came to my school, actually, my primary school, and signed some books. I don't know why I didn't get her to sign this actual book. That was very stupid of me, but I got her to sign a bookmark as you can see there it's in the this i lost this bookmark and now i found it now i found the bookmark it's actually in the book which makes sense but yeah so i picked up these books and i ended up reading the whole series i'm really liking it i think they're very underrated these books and don't get enough love next we have wildwood which is a middle grade book this is actually my brother's book he watched another video where i mentioned this book my intimidating books video which i'll put up in the top corner and he watched that video and he was like kira that's my book <laughs> so so yes, hello Angus, this is your book, we know. Everyone here on the channel now knows that this is your book. I actually haven't read this though, so I do want to read it before I give it back to him if he ever wants it back. Angus, let me know if you want this book back. Next we have a couple of witch books which are books that I don't even know where I got these. I probably just saw them at some point when I was a kid in a bookstore, liked the look of them and picked them up. The thing I loved about these books was that they had comics at the beginning of them. And this was my first taste of comics. It's only the first few pages. As you can see here, the pages then become just normal. But they had comics at the start of these books, which I fell in love with. So this was actually the first time I got my sort of glimpse into comics in my life. And you can now see that my taste is very based around manga and graphic novels, actually. And I'm just getting more and more into them in my later years. So I actually am really glad, even though like these books aren't very good. I was just obsessed with the comics part. I would read them over and over again. And as you can see here, I had book one at the back of in book 11. Once again, just a book series that my parents didn't give me any guidance on and I just picked up whatever I could get and I had no idea what was going on. So that's really fun. The rest of these here are just personal items, uh, a lot of diaries, a lot of planners that I've had in my past. So these were actually my two favorite books as a kid, like as a very young child. So between the ages of zero and five, these are the books my mom would read to me. So I have these on me to read to my kids. So What Are Friends For is the first one and the classic Guess How Much I Love You. Amazing book. And last Lastly, another book that I read a lot as a kid was this book called Nature, A Child's First Library of Learning. My mum bought me 
quite a few of these but it's essentially just you read it and it just like teaches you a lot of information so I learned a, oh, and for some reason as a kid I found this really interesting and thought it was the best thing ever so you know go me and wanting to learn rather than do leisurely activities as a kid but this book was so fun to read it made it feel like leisure so I've kept this one my child is going to be an expert on nature it appears anyway let's move on to the next row so my next shelf is quite random this is my most random shelf this is sort of my miscellaneous slash literary fiction shelf also a little bit of non-fiction here so it's pretty much just anything that doesn't fit into the rest of my shelves here we have small pleasures this is a book from school of life one of my favorite youtube channels it's something i do eventually want to pick up i just haven't picked it up yet next we have wolf by wolf this is a young adult book that I did not like. We'll just move on from that. Next is The Host, which I mentioned in my Intimidating TBR video. It's huge, it's a, it's a beast, it's a brick, and I do eventually want to get to it. We also have My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Mosfeg up the top here. This is a book that I picked up this year due to another booktuber called Ariel Bissett. She loved this book and I liked the premise and I liked the cover so I picked it up. It's about a woman that goes on a year of hibernation that is drug induced and it was a very interesting premise but just in the end it didn't really sell the overall plot and ending to me very well and I just sort of lost interest as I read it. We also have Little Bee which is one of my mum's books that I picked up because I liked the look of but I haven't read it yet. How to Speak So People Really Listen which is a book that my auntie bought for me when I was struggling a little bit in my masters with the stage fright of public speaking for my research project. Ended up reading it, it made me feel really better and I actually killed that presentation. So thank you a lot to my auntie. That is the same auntie that gave me a lot of vinyl. So she is really the hero in this story. A Stephen Hawking's book, The Grand Design. Another non-fiction book I wanna to get to soon is, is A Light That Never Goes Out, The Enduring Saga of the Smiths by Tony Fletcher. This is a non-fiction beast, uh, obviously about the Smiths. Just posted a video about all my Smiths vinyl collection. If you want to check that out, it'll be in the top corner once again. But yeah, I love the Smiths, one of my favorite bands of all time, and I definitely want to read that book at some point soon. Chinese Cinderella. This book blew up in Australia about 10 years ago in my early teens, so I read that then. I think it's also a nonfiction. The Museum of Extraordinary Things is a book that was given to me by my stepdad. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Another book I loved a lot as a kid, Patrick Ness, an author I really love. He's a YA author. Uh, this book was turned turned into a TV show or movie. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't watched that, but I read the book and I do, I did like it. I thought it was okay. Got a couple of Gillian Flynn here. I have talked about her in my Intimidating Books video as well. I think that she, she's interesting. Okay, that's what I'm gonna say on her. I think she's a very interesting author. Gone Girl is very amazing. I've watched the movie, but I have not read the book. So there you go. I do wanna get to Gone Girl, but I also have read Sharp Objects. Didn't really like it. And I do want to get to Dark Places and just give her the second shot. I've also got Ishiguro on the top here, The Barry Giant. I love the book Never Let Me Go. I think that's one of the best dystopians of the modern era and I do really love Japanese authors even though I know he moved and I think he is now English or lives in England but has those Japanese roots and I love Japanese literary fiction so you'll see a few more of that on this shelf but yeah this is a book that I want to get to by him. The Girls, another YA book that I picked up due to booktube because of the hype and hated it. Got quite a few of those books on my shelf. Their box obviously was turned into a movie Movie. My sister bought this for me for Christmas and I do think I'll really like it. It's sort of up my alleyway of like mystery thriller sort of style but I did watch the movie. I caved in and watched the movie so I want to forget the movie and the plot line before I actually pick this book up. The story of Tom Brennan is a book that I had to read for school. I think it's very meh. Eh. Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda is a book I picked up because of the booktube community. It's another YA. I actually didn't mind this one. This has gay romance elements to it, which I appreciate. Next we have The Looking for Ella Brandy. This is one of my mum's favourite books of all time and I read it because of that. Um, I did like it quite a bit, but I didn't think it was anything worth recommending. We also have Jodie Picoult. We've got My Sister's Keeper, which has turned into a movie. I have read this book and I quite liked it. I've also got Perfect Match to eventually pick up and read at some point. Then we have Rainbow Row. We've got three books here. We've got Eleanor on Park, which I don't think is a very good book. We've also got Carry On, one of my favorite YA books of all time. As you can see, it's a gay romance and I love gay romance. I do really appreciate this book. It's a bit of like a spin-off of Harry Potter. I just think that the characters in this book are amazing and the plot is really interesting. Wayward Son, right next to it, is the sequel, the highly anticipated sequel of that. And I didn't think it lived up to the first one, but the first one's so good, so it's fine. This you can see 
obviously much shorter, not as, uh, doesn't have as much heart to it and does seem like a bit of a cash grab, but whatever, it's fine. Next we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Everyone knows this book. It's quite good. I don't think it's as good as everybody else thinks it is. I just think it's okay. Jasper Jones is an Australian book. I really liked it. I liked this book quite a bit. As you can see, I've got quite a few tabs in it. At the time I read it, I was really in the mood to read it and I think that really helped. But yeah, I think maybe I should do a reread of this book. The fact that I had so many quotes and so many tabs going on is quite interesting because I don't usually do that very much. Next we have The Book Thief, another intimidating book for me. I particularly don't want to pick this up anytime soon. I don't think I'm gonna like it. I'm sorry everybody. I know everyone loves this type of stuff but I just think it's a little too much for me at least. My, I have a very specific brain and that likes specific things and this ain't it chief. A few more here we've got Ready Player One, one of my favorite books of all time. I recommend it to everybody ever that's ever lived. We've got up here Everything Everything, a YA book that I think I was given to by my mum that maybe I bought for my mum actually. She likes YA more than I do. However, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna like this. I just look at the cover and all I want. Also got the Maze Runner here. I really love the Maze Runner. I think it's very fun. Uh, I think I gave it a three or a four, maybe around there. Um, but I never picked up the next one. And I know Cozy Bex loves the second one. So maybe I should pick up that second book sometime soon. However, there you go. I have read the first one at least and liked it and I have a copy of it. Octavia E. Butler, Seed to Harvest, mentioned in my Intimidating Books video, quite large and was recommended to me by my stepdad so he gave that copy to me. And then I've got my Haruki Murakami, so I've got three books. So firstly I've got two books over here, Norwegian Wood and Kafka on the Shore which I've both read. Hated Norwegian Wood, loved Kafka on the Shore. I've also read Wind Up Bird Chronicle by him, really loved that one too. Anyway, I've got my next two that I want to pick up by him, A Wild Cheap Chase and what I talk about when I talk about running, which I think is a little non-fiction essay uh, situation going on. I think I might pick this one up very soon and this one sort of soon, maybe later this year. And then I've also got Stephen King The Shining, which has been on my TBR for the longest time. It's not funny. Everyone yell at me, please. Oh my god, this is going to go for so long. This is my fantasy shelf. Firstly we've got Harry Potter and the book we do not talk about. Uh, I know The Cursed Child is apparently worse but I don't think this is very good either. The Fantastical Beasts whatever series she's trying to do for more money. I don't like it. I just want to stick to this and I sort of want to get rid of this. I don't even want it to be mentioned or seen in my room. Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. I really liked this book quite a bit. I gave it a reread very recently because the first time I read it I was very young, hardly remembered anything. And I was looking at picking up the second one in the bookstore the other day but I didn't. But I f I'm sort of getting close to doing that because I do want to finish that series. Next we have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, a book that my boyfriend swears up and down is the best book to ever exist. I think it's more of a one out of five stars, but that's for another time. Next we have The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia, which is the second book in the series. I do want to read the whole entire series. I think it'd be worth it because I did really like this one and I liked the book, but I specifically have this one and have read this one because of the movie. Then we have my Mistborn trilogy, so I've got number one and two here. I finished number two last night, everybody. <laughs> yes, I finally finished you. Very good. I give this a three out of five and I give this a four out of five. I think the second one is better than the first. I will mention more about this book in my wrap up at the end of this month. So look out for that. I'm ready to say a lot of things about that book. Quickly grabbed The Hero of Ages then because I just recently bought this. So this is one, two and three in the Mistborn series. And I just started this number three. I'm so excited to finally finish. Next, we've got a little book I picked up from the op shop a little while ago, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Heard a lot of great things about this and that it's probably going to be something that I really like. So I want to pick up this soon. It's also quite little, which I like. Next, we have Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite authors of all time. So I'm really excited to get to this at some point. George R. R. Martin, the Game of Thrones series, Song of Ice and Fire. I have mixed feelings on these books. I liked this one quite a bit, started reading this one, just couldn't bring myself to read it. I, you can see how far through I got through it before I just gave up. I know number three is apparently really good. I just watched the TV show move on. I don't care enough. I don't have enough time for it. Next, we have my favorite Patrick Ness books. We have A Knife Never Letting Go, Chaos Walking series. 
I really like these books, especially the second one. I gave this a four out of five when I read it. I have very good memories reading this book. I love the characters in these books. This is a YA series that I quite like. So there you go. It can happen. It does happen. It's right here in front of us. Another YA series that I didn't hate, and it might have been because of the time that I read them. Of course, like everybody else to ever live, I read these when I was around 14, 15, 16. So what do you expect? Of course I liked them. But maybe if I read them now, I wouldn't. I think actually 100% maybe if I read this series now I wouldn't have given a high as ranking as I did. However, I do want to reread this book and you know why? It's because Midnight Sun, which is Twilight from Edward's perspective, is finally dropping this year. A book that I've been highly anticipating for years. I am so excited to read Midnight Sun. So I want to do a reread of this book next month, which will be really interesting because it will be very interesting to see if I still give it a 4 out of 5, which is a very high rating for me to give a book. Next we also have the fantasy books that I keep mentioning in every single video ever for the last three months, Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb and Aragon by Christopher Poloni. I want to get to these two series but when I do is a question to ask on another day. Next we have a few cassette tapes right here. Let's have a look at these cassette tapes actually because I am a music channel as well. This is Underground Lovers. What the East Side Stories, I have no idea what this is. Also got some Erotica Madonna, which would probably be from my mum and my auntie. And here, another little mix that my mum's put together. PJ Harvey, Dry, Chelsea Girl, Died Pretty Mixed. Ooh, nice, okay, I see you. I love Died Pretty. Mixed, Ride, plus Died Pretty. There you go, interesting. Next, we have the Cassandra Clare Infernal Devices situation. I know that apparently this is one series, the Mall Instruments thingy, and then this is another thing. But Sep, I, oh god, no, this one is. The City ones are the first series. Oh god, I, I really don't know. Okay, I know there's a lot of people that know everything and anything about these books, but I don't really know anything about them, so I haven't read them. I do eventually want to give them a shot, and that's all I'm going to say on that. Hunger Games series. I love the Hunger Games series. Catching Fire is a 5 out of 5 stars for me. I'm not going to take it out because all my DS games and CDs are going to fall and topple over each other. But The Hunger Games Catching Fire is my favourite YA book, apart from Harry Potter books, if we discard Harry Potter books. Hunger Games Catching Fire would be my favourite YA book of all time. So there it is, the 5 out of 5, the holy grail of young adult for me. The Help, which is a book I read when I was quite young, liked it quite a bit, but I, I don't know, I think it was like a 3.5 or a 3 for me. I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's a little boring, but yeah, whatever. Next, we have some other media. So we have a lot of my CDs, the ones that aren't downstairs in my CD holders, which I've gone through in my CD collection video, which I'll link up in the top corner if you want to look at my CD collection in detail. We also have a few DVDs. So we have Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleash, a childhood classic. Every child should watch that movie. It is hilarious. And we also have a few more of my favorites down here. We've got Coraline and Edward Scissorhands, which are the sort of Tim Burton-esque vibe of my movies that I had growing up. And they fall into that category. I've also got Whisper of the Heart and Mary and the Witch's Flower, which are two Studio Ghibli movies that I really like because Studio Ghibli is one of my favorite production companies for movies and Miyazaki is one of my favorite directors of all time. However, those are not Miyazaki movies. But if you do want to see me talk about Miyazaki movies, check out my Miyazaki movies ranked video because I had a lot of fun filming that. Sorry I'm mentioning so many other videos, but like it's my whole entire bookshelf. Of course, there's going to be a lot of media that's shown in my other videos. So there you go. I've also got a random Lord of the Rings the Two Towers, which was given to me by my grandpa. So there you go. <laughs> I was like 12 and I was like, I don't even know what that is, but it's very cute. And I hold on to it because he gave it to me. Next, we have my classics shelf. So let's go from this side, actually. We've got more cassette tapes right here. So what do we have now? We have The Best of Dance 92. Wow, I want to listen to this right now. We've also got Buffalo Tom. Buffalo Tom Bird Brain. I, oh God, I don't know what these things are. We also have some classic books. So we've got The Testaments by Margaret Atwood that just came out at the end of last year. Oh, sorry, maybe mid last year, I think. Really enjoyed this. I think this is a five out of five stars for me, actually. I recommend Handmaid's Tale, which is the first in the series. 
which is a classic and then this came out as a sequel I think this one's even better sorry there you go there's my unpopular opinion for you I've also got Dracula a really nice version that I showed in my intimidating books video again I am very excited to read this at some point because I love gothic fiction look at that cover that's so beautiful and it feels so amazing I'm telling you oh my god next we have me taking off my jumper because I'm so hot from holding my arms left like this one second this is literally an arm workout it's crazy okay so next we have a few little modern classics that I bought so we've got George Orwell notes on nationalism we've got Wendell Berry why am I not going to buy a computer which I read in summer of this year I'm in Australia so summer is winter by the way um so I read it maybe like four months ago and then the missing girl by Shelley Jackson I really like Shelley Jackson I really want to read more of her stuff so I'm very excited to get to this one at some point then we have my prized possessions of my bookshelf which is my orange penguins so I've got one pink one which is Wuthering Heights given to me by my mum and then we have all my orange ones that I've collected so we have the psychology of love by Freud a psychologist that I'm very interested in I think he's great and that's another unpopular opinion I would assume because a lot of people don't like him but I think he's got a lot to say that's actually worth listening to especially for his time I think he was quite a pioneer of psychology we also have Treasure Island we have Dracula this one here for Dracula I bought for myself with my own money and then this was given to me by someone afterwards so I actually want to read this one and I'll give this one away maybe because I don't need two copies I've also got Tender is the Night by Fitzgerald I love Fitzgerald we also have Junkie haven't read that one yet the ones actually from this way on I haven't actually read any of them the ones I have read it over here as you can see they get a bit more dirty especially Lolita I'm just gonna go through the ones that I haven't read really quickly that would be Junkie, Cold Comfort Farm, The Communist Manifesto, Holding the Man, On the Road and then those are the ones I actually haven't read yet and then the ones I have read are over here so Frankenstein I've read and it's my favorite book of all time let's give it a little love I love you we also have Lolita which I read more recently I liked it quite a bit next one is we have always lived in the castle which is one of my favorite classics of all time at this point I love this book I love horror classics they're the best thing ever and Shelley Jackson is amazing we also have book of longing which is a poetry collection by Leonard Cohen and we also have a clockwork orange one of my favorite books of all time as well and then we also have the beach which actually is within this range and I could buy it in this range but I ended up owning this copy because it's the one that my mum gave me as a kid and it sort of just has a lot of nostalgia for me now so I've got The Beach by Alex Garland one of my favorite books of all time this would be my top five books of all time actually next we have my mum's copy of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas this is a beat up copy of a book I absolutely love it I love this copy that I own um but yeah this book is really good actually I really enjoyed this book when I read it next we have a classic I did not like that was Miss Dalloway. The thing with Virginia Woolf is I just don't like stream of consciousness writing. It's just not my thing. And that is her thing. So we just don't gel like that. And that's fine. It doesn't mean that she's bad. I think there's other people that would really like her. She's just not for me. Next we have Great Expectations, a book that I eventually want to get to by Charles Dickens. Then we have one of my favorite books of all time as well. It is George Orwell, Animal Farm. Love that book. Then we have The Crucible, a book that I read for literature class in high school. We also have The Castle, another book that I mentioned in my intimidating books. I tried to read this book at one point and it just wasn't for me at that time in my life so I put it back away for another time got two copies of member of the wedding by Carson McCullers this is a book I had to read for high school we've also got the beautiful and damned another Fitzgerald book I have read this one and I liked it quite a bit but not as much as Great Gatsby if you haven't read a Fitzgerald book then you should read Great Gatsby and that's pretty much it Oh my god, my neck hurts. Jesus. Philip K. Dick. I really like Dreams of Electric Sheep or whatever that book is. I can't exactly remember. But it was made into a movie called Blade Runner, a really famous movie. So I picked up this book waiting to read it, but I tried to read it and I just didn't like it. So put it back away for another time because maybe I'll pick it up and enjoy it at some other point. Also got H.G. Wells mentioned in a couple of videos before. I want to read The Island of Dr. Moreau. I think I'd really enjoy it. We then have a really beaten up copy of Pride and Prejudice. I haven't read any Jane Austen, so let me know what Jane Austen book you think I should read first. Also got A Doll's House and other plays, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and Through the Looking Glass. Love that classic. I've also got my little, my little Totoro guys getting in the way now. Gigi and Totoro need to move over to here. See you guys later. And then the rest of my classics include The Bell Jar, a book that I quite like by Sylvia Plath, Slaughterhouse Five, which I also quite like, Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien, which I really like and I want to get to the Lord of the Rings series very soon. A Single Man, a book I also like and I love the motion picture. The motion picture is really good. I read this book for literature class in high school. Catch from the Rye, I read this for high school as well. I thought it was okay. I don't love or hate it, even though everybody seems to fall into those two categories. Birdie, I mentioned in my intimidating books, this book 
looks really intense, really emotional, and something I want to get to quite soon. Emma, another Jane Austen book that I'm tossing up between picking. This is my beautiful copy of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kessie. This is in my top five books of all time as well, I'm pretty sure. I absolutely loved the torn edges of this and the illustrations in it, and the front cover is absolutely beautiful. Just, I love this copy of my book so much, and I love this book in general as well. More people should borrow this book off of me. I'm annoyed that people don't want to read this book. Okay, move on. We also have King Henry the Fourth right? Can I read Roman numerals? Yes. Part one. Um, this is a Shakespeare. I really like Shakespeare and I actually want to read more Shakespeare. I read this book for my English class, my year 12 English class, I'm pretty sure. Oh my god, and finally we make it up to the top shelf. Okay, here we are. This is my last shelf. It is my graphic novels, manga, and huge books shelf. Okay, firstly I have my Miyazaki art books. So I have one random one, just an overall, I think it's like a bootleg Miyazaki art book. And then I have three of the official Studio Ghibli library books. Those would be the one for Porco Rosso, the one for Spirit Away, and the one for House Moving Castle. I have read the one for this. I think I've read the Spirited Away one, but I haven't read these two yet. I just like owning them. They were worth quite a bit and they're absolutely beautiful books. And I think I'm going to do a video just flipping through them and showing them because I think that they're absolutely beautiful. But um, at this point, yeah, they're just going to sit there and I will eventually get to them and read them. I have quite a few editions of Farago magazine, which is the magazine um, that was self-published by students at my university. These were the editions that I actually produced illustrations for because I love to illustrate and I love to graphic design. So, you know, there you go. I have copies of my printed illustrations. I then also have a copy of Odyssey magazine which is a magazine that I did the graphic design for a couple years ago with my ex-boyfriend. It was a very fun experience. I love graphic design so this is really cool to produce. So um, yeah and maybe doing like the graphic design of a magazine is something I could do another video on in the future because I love everything nerdy. I also have Pitchfork review. I had this given to me by my ex-boyfriend as well while I was doing the graphic design for Odyssey magazine because I had a lot of inspiration for me for graphic design. I love the graphic design of Pitchfork Review. It's a very good magazine. Next we have some graphic novels and manga. So we have a Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind manga volume 2. I picked this up for really cheap and I need to get volume 1 and actually read them. I also have Alex and Ada which I don't think is a very good graphic novel at all and I do not recommend it. We then have some Sandman by Neil Gaiman. I already really love these books and I'm very excited to read the rest of them. I recently finished volume 2. I am excited to finish this series. Next we have an interesting one here. We have Akira volume 2. I picked this up for cheap at a book sale because I do eventually want to read all these but this is only number two and I needed to buy number one. Stay tuned for the end of this video to see something interesting about that. Then we also have the three volumes of Heartstopper. I recently read all of these. They're all covered quite extensively on my channel. If you just want to watch all my other videos then you'll see me talking about them a lot. But I did eventually finish this last one. I thought this one went downhill and I'm excited to talk about it and discuss with you guys in my May wrap up. We also have The Forts of Nanushka by Nan Whitcomb. This is volumes one to six. I really enjoyed these when I read them. I read them quite a bit ago. I was given to this by my mum. Very old copy. Got a bit of mold on the back of that. I don't even know what that is. This is a very old copy of it and I really love it. I love owning books that have been already owned by someone else and loved by them. I think books are made to be loved. That's my opinion on that. I want to give this a reread soon because I really enjoyed the first time I read it and I don't remember anything about it now. But it's a poetry collection. I I don't know if I said that. Next we have my two favorite Khaled Hosseini books. We have The Kite Runner and we also have A Thousand Splendid Sons. A Thousand Splendid Sons is one of my favorite books of all time. I love this book with every fiber of my being. It's one of the first adult fiction books I ever read in my entire life and it blew my mind. I also really love The Kite Runner but not as much and I'm really excited to read And the Mountains Echoed which is a newer release by Khaled Hosseini. So I will be reading that in the next coming weeks and we'll talk about it in my May wrap up. Also have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruz Zafon. God, sorry if I ruined that name. A book that I picked up for cheap again and something that I just see floating around so I do eventually want to 
read that book as well. Finnegan of the Rock, another book that is well known. And I haven't read this, so I do eventually want to read it. It's been on my TBR for the longest time. Ridiculous amount of time. Mao's Last Dancer, one of my favorite books of all time as well. But a book that I haven't mentioned much to my channel. But that was another book that I read when I was younger. And it really influenced my reading habits quite a bit. And my reading tastes sort of blew my mind as well when I read that book. Also got Shades of Grey, a book that I don't have really any opinions on. I haven't read it yet. I'll Give You the Sun, a book that is a young adult fiction, has gay romance elements and that is why I read it and that is why I loved it. Jodie Bacall, we've got more Jodie Bacall. This is just another one that I want to get to by her, but it is a larger one so it's up here. My Death Note, which is one of my favorite mangas of all time, but I actually never finished it because it got so bad at the end. I couldn't finish the last couple issues. I hated them so much. Percy Polis, so hopefully I'm saying that right. This is number two. I ended up reading these quite a few years ago. I really liked them. I only own number two because I picked it up from a book sale, but number one I ended up just borrowing from the library. The Little Coffee Shop of Kabul. I don't think I actually want to read this. I don't think I'm going to end up enjoying it. I can sort of tell sometimes from looking at books and the type of people that end up really liking them that I'm not going to like them because I just know I don't have the same taste as those people or the same taste as what this cover is portraying to me. Dan Brown, I mentioned at the start of my Intimidating Books video, so you can go look at that for the story on these, but I have not read these yet. Crime is another Another book that was on my Hello Picky. Crime was another book on my Intimidating Books video if you want to go check that out but I haven't read this yet. And then we have House of Leaves, the best horror book I've ever read maybe. This book freaked me out. It's one of the weirdest, craziest experiences of reading I've ever had. I need to do a whole video on why this book is so good and why you need to read it. Just took this book down so I can give you a proper flip through but just to see why I think this book's so good you can sort of see that's a little crazy. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not just like the normal sort of story. There's very like weird things going on in this book. It's very different. Sometimes there's pages just of nothing. Sometimes you have random inserts like this and it was very interesting to read. I really enjoyed this book. It is crazy. The thing with this book though is that it's very thick and very long and it took me a long time to read and it was boring at points but it needs to get props just for what it is trying to achieve which was something great and I think it did achieve that in a way. I just couldn't give it a five stars simply because it was a little boring at points but however I would still recommend this book quite a bit. It's pretty damn crazy. And then quickly we have a few more books up here. We have The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith which is JK Rowling's pin name. And this is a thriller mystery sort of series she brought out. I read the first one. I thought it was okay. Didn't pick up the rest of them. And also I've got the complete book of naughty stories for good boys and girls, which is a book series I used to read as a kid. It just has a bunch of short stories about naughty people, but for good boys and girls to read. So I read it as a good girl. We finally have the last little bit. Of stuff to get to. So I know that this isn't essentially my bookshelf but the only reason these books aren't on my bookshelf is because I'm sort of trying to figure out my TBR for next month and also a lot of these books was just given recently by people or just recently bought so this is a bit of a mess right now but I am gonna go through them because these are books that I do own and it feels weird to not mention books that I own just because they're not on my bookshelf. Like I want this video to include pretty much every book that I own in my room. So here you go. We also have a few books. We've got the notes from Underground, another Dobzieski book that I really want to read. Read. We've got Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, which is the first book in Lord of the Rings. We've got Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, a book that I want to get to soon. We've got another Dovetsky, Crime and Punishment, which usually sits up on my shelf, my top shelf, with the big huge books, but I'm thinking of reading this book next month. <laughs> because I'm crazy. We've also got The Little Prince and The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. These are some books that I bought more recently and I'll show them properly in a whole video that I'm going to do later this month. We've also got The Mountain Echoed because I will be reading this book very soon, next week presumably. And I also quickly showing Mishima, which is the book I'm currently reading at the moment. I just started reading it. I'm very excited. I already like it. But this is The Sailor Who Fell from the Grace with the Sea. Then also down the bottom we have Akira Volume 1, which I recently bought and it was so damn expensive, but I'm really excited because such a beautiful book and I'm very excited to get really deep into this story as I now have number one and number two and they're quite thick. So excited to read this manga, but yeah, we'll show this more properly in a whole video. And just behind these, we have the series of unfortunate events. Let me sneak up books that I own with some bookends. This is sitting on top of a record player that I own and I have nearly all of them. Most of these later ones are owned by my boyfriend and I just borrowed them to finish off the series and I have to give them back to him. And a few of the ones at the front are also owned by my brother. I own a few of them and he owns some of them. So a lot of these actually aren't mine, but they are currently sitting in my room. But anyway, that is 
all my books, I'm pretty sure. If you have watched the end, thank you very much for your viewership and for enjoying me talking about all my books. Please give me a like, a comment, and a subscribe. I really love hearing from everybody in the comments. It's one of my favorite things about YouTube, so please talk to me if you want to. I'm very excited to respond to you all. And until my next apartment, buy a bookshelf. I'm really excited and I will definitely do another video coming up putting my bookshelf back together at my next apartment with maybe a new organization system. I don't know if that's going to be colour, if that's going to be genre, if that's going to be um, author, alphabetical order. We're gonna, we're gonna see and I'm very excited to do a more organizational sort of situation for my bookshelf because right now it's just feeling a little messy, you know what I mean? And I want to clean it up and make sure that it makes a bit more sense and I'm able to find books a bit easier. But yeah, thank you everybody for watching and until next time, see you later from all my books and me.